Okay, I was curious. I was watching Sienna Jones' video because I chose it, or because I choose it, and I was thinking about that. She was talking about um, sexual dysphoria, where you feel like you're in the body, you can have anxiety because you feel like you're in the body of a different person, and that's why transsexuals have to transition, but it's not always that way. I think that kind of summed up her view. Uh, she's very articulate, and it's really hard to sum up one point of her view because it's all interlaced and she's a very good speaker and it's very hard to articulate that at least for me to be honest because <laughs> I'm not but what I'm trying to say is that I'm thinking about that and I'm like you know I I don't know I mean what are we supposed to all be Borg queens when in the future I'm a futurist and it's like you know trans rights, trans wrong, transphobia, trans hate. Oh, I, I don't care about those terms. Well, I mean, it's interesting and it, and all the LGB, uh, LGBT uh, language of transsexuals makes it have the ability to communicate these different concepts that are very detailed but I believe it also frames it in a politically correct social progressive way that you can't really articulate some other things about it outside of that scope and from a futurist and someone who believes in universal health care uh, a, a economic progressive that wants a near uh, a limited scarcity future I have to wonder if the whole idea of someone tran transitioning isn't completely gender dysmorphism and would be like equivalent to people who have the ghost limbs, not the ghost limb, but where they feel one of the parts, one limb or another, because of their mind, isn't a part of them. It's a perfectly healthy limb, but they don't want it, feel alienated towards it, and have to lose it. You know, like people who cut off their legs. Well, and, and people who have compulsive plastic surgery. Now, I guess you can see where I'm going with this about transphobia and uh, transsexualism. Well, board queen, I guess. But, really, I mean, you take those two things into account and you put in universal health care and health care, especially when health care is an aspect of technology. Technology the science is medicine. The technology of healthcare makes new things possible. Transsexualism wouldn't even been a possible before, at least in its current state. But I, I was just reading a book, um, The Origins of Satan, and no, it's it's a secular book. And I don't read religious books. And, but it was, I mean, it was a historically religious book. It wasn't a religious from religious point of view book. I don't, I'm an atheist. But, it's just that this one line came across that this author was talking about how he pictured this person who wanted to remain abstinent and free because he wanted to be religious and not follow the Bible dictates of spread your seed like wildfire or poppies or something. And the thing was was that the author interpreted that he wanted to be castrated I mean, this was back in like the 3rd century BC or something because he wanted to remain pure 
But I thought about that, and I thought, well, wait a minute. Was this was this an application of a transsexualism? Uh, basic castration? We see that a lot in history. You know, um, uh, basic castration is the mark of someone, well, uh, male to female. In the most basic sense of the word. In uh, in the technology of the times, which was just basically castration, and it made me think. You know, well, was it really that, or was it the other thing? So maybe this is something that's medical that has been happening for a long time, but we're enabling it because we have more advanced technology. And what's concerning, as me, as a, as a cultural conservative someone who wants rest, less regulation and wants more open choices and a deregulated cultural norm is that we're signing and also a futurist who's a progressive technologist or technocrat so to speak um, is that we're starting to sign rights people's civil rights to technological imperatives. And that's that's troubling not as an LGB LG a BT sorry um issue but or a conservative issue, but also as a futurist. Um, you know, um, I've thought about that a little bit, and, you know, if you really think about it from a science fiction perspective, we're kind of the Borg. I mean, we're embedding, already we're embedding new prosthetics and, and surgeries, and, well, now... I find myself approving of that, and I'll admit it, when it goes to the norm. When you can have technology that helps someone see again, or hear again, I'm for it. There's people that are uh, handy capable, handy capable, that feel that you trying to cure them takes away from their disablement rights. And I find that completely abhorrent. I, 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 if someone can see or hear better and somebody through a right is trying to stop that, that's horrible to me. But see, I had to really reflect upon that because one is contradictory from the other except in viewpoints, except that it's going towards the norm. Oh, hearing? Oh, seeing? Oh, that's better. Now, and I've noticed I've also had uh, objection to that when it seems like they're augmenting people. Like, a uh, ballerina had hip surgery because she had broken a femur or I think that's a femur, the hip bone. Well, anyway, if I'm getting the term wrong, she broke her pelvis. And they put in a new ball and socket joint and she could actually do better now because the technology of the hip replacement gave her an advantage. And while I'm glad she could walk and everything, it, it seemed troublesome to me. Now, it also seems troublesome with the transsexual issue. It has, it can't be just solely guarded uh, you can't say civil rights are almost all important, but technology, that's just faddish, and, you know, and that's a medical choice, and we've already established a medical condition. No, because you can't just brush off the futurism and the technological importance of it, because there is a philosophical question of how far are we going to be technically enabled. I did this on a video a long time ago that was just about this lady 
who had artificial legs and she could change the height of her legs and the prosthetics were so good that she could actually was actually functionally walking although she didn't have feeling and other things I'm sure she would have preferred her natural legs or am I so sure I think so but it did serve her I have a video it's one of my second or third rated ones so I, it makes me curious and the point is is that if this is a sexual dimorphism then what we might not what we might actually be having is people that are being self mutilated with the consent of society for the mistaken idea that one gender can actually ever be another maybe oh that's the second part of what she's talking about Deanna Jones she was talking about how uh, radical feminists uh, are let's see if I get this right she talked about how radical feminists are saying that transsexualism is something oh if if things were more it, it, yes if body uh, if gender identities that's it sorry I had to think about that clearly if gender identities were more actually fluid instead of just technically assigned to male and female, of which I believe in, of course, you know, being a secular, I mean, being a cultural conservative, you know, male, female, slot beast, tab A, you know, but okay, besides that, if they were actually, let me refrain and go on, if gender identities were more fluid, you wouldn't need to assign people a certain gender identity with the blade of a knife. Now that got me thinking. Well, maybe we're all looking at this wrong. Maybe there is only two gender identities. But maybe within those, you can't really switch. You're always a man, you're always a woman. But you're, you, I, I, I ascertain that you're mutilating yourself either way. But looking at it from another perspective that I had, and this is the, really the point of the video, maybe the fluidity is not between the male and the female that can't be changed, but maybe the fluidity is within the different types of male and different types of female that seem to express a a identity of the other. That's what I mean. I mean, I was watching this show, Little Big Man, and they said, and I, I don't know if this is correct or not, but I'm just going to use it as an example of what kind of copped in my mind because she was also talking about two spirits and how you might be one person or the other but maybe you're never one person or the other they used to have a word for Indians that were homosexual I guess at least this is what I saw on the show so thank you for what it's worth um and what they saw was what they did was they had kind of a third identity and this is an this is like a a uh, homosexual Indian, but I don't know if that really applies in Indian culture, American, Native American culture, or not. You know, but um, but he was the one who freaking it was almost like a cross between a homosexual and a transsexual because he peed sitting down like the women. He did the weaving. He, you know, he stayed with the squaws. He was um he was not the lion but uh he was the girly man gay or transsexual or 
transsexual without having transsexuality of operations and stuff. He was the trans kind of gender image kind of thing. And they just, and they assigned him to that. There, there was not, I guess, uh, homo uh, phobia in American Indian culture or something. Who knows? I mean, how many of these guys really got the bad of tomahawk? Who's to really tally that, you know? But, uh, it leads into the whole thing about Native Americanism and different cultures. But the point is, is that he was considered different in a non-ostracized way. So, that made me kind of think, what if people who are transgendered are really uh, um, kind of mutilating themselves because they're another type of man or another type of woman. Maybe there's fluidity within a gender. And that accounts for these people who think that they're transitioning to the other gender when they're not. They never are. They never can. Because, well, I don't know. It's just, to me, it looks like you watch Zeanna Jones, and it's like, sometimes you can still see dude. And you watch, I don't know, I've never seen really too many pre-op uh, female to males. But there's still something in the eyes that are, maybe this is completely subjective, but to me it's like there's still something in the eyes that just a sharpness, a look, a thing that just isn't male. I mean, I've seen one guy who looked like the drummer from friggin' uh, Metallica. And it was a nude, and I just wanted to see what these people were referencing and stuff. And it was like a guy all over, but there was just a little nib for a um, post-op um, uh, male. Or female to male. There was no real genitalia except for a little flap thing. I don't know what you call it. But anyway, the point is is that in the eyes was this still a woman? But maybe without all the surgeries and everything or at least fluidity in a male to female or male to male and female to female Maybe that would have been a different type of woman. A, well, like a, like a, like a female or a, uh, or with a male, a, uh, or she male, I don't know. You know, I mean, that's the derogatory term, but no, I'm trying to get to the point that there could be a big mistake going on and and with our social political constructs and everything, we may not be realizing what the future would realize and these issues of trans rights could be a big mistake. A very big mistake. Of course, you know, I know everyone's going to say this, 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 that, that, that. You know, then that's fine because it's all there. But how do we know? Well, we look at 50 years ago or 20 years ago and we could see they made big mistakes before. But how could you have told them that then? It's easy to say from now, oh, well, that was just, you know, that was completely bad. And we just didn't know what don't we know now that we absolutely defend and define as right I don't want to be a Borg queen <laughs> I mean really and I worry that the future is going to go like that I'm worried that we're making a mistake and yes I still have my uh, patriarchal patriarchal Patriarch, patriarchy, the patriarchal, 
that's hard to say, I admit it, underpinnings of my views. Maybe if I stuttered or stimmered, the point is, is that someone asked me to think, and this is what I'm thinking about. And I don't think it's unreasonable or bad or anything to be a free thinker and actually talk about these things. I should probably put in a little bit more effort to bringing look a few things up and try to read them on something before I just turn on the webcam. I'll grab that. But this is for free thought. And this is actually trying to be a reasonable video. So I think, and I do, that this is something worthy of thinking about. Maybe transsexualism is a technology or an abuse of technology that in a more enlightened kind of understanding idea of sexuality of male and female fluidity of their sexuality that we're mistaking for cross-sexuality, but it's not. That's my point. Okay, thoughts, ideas, conversations, down below. Let me know what you think.